In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to take the keyword research that we did in the previous video and implement it through the on-page optimization process. Stay tuned. Yeah. Page optimizations are one of the things that SEO professionals usually forget and end up falling through the cracks. So what I'm going to show you in this video, again, is the actual template that's included within the Blueprint training. This is also the exact template that we use for all of our clients. We run and manage all this through this Google Sheets add-on. After we complete the keyword research, we simply fire up the add-on, make a copy of the on-page template, and then copy and paste the data that we need from our keyword research file into our on-page optimization file. Now the on-page optimization file will actually automatically pull through a lot of things that we built when we wired up this template to really fit the needs of our agency. So now what I wanna do is show you live over the shoulder exactly how we take this keyword data and turn it into actionable on-page SEO. Let's get into it. Through an on-page example for how I would fill this out for my agency site Webris. So in the keyword research module, you'll probably remember if you watch the videos that I pretty much did the on-page for it there. Uh, but I want to go through within the framework of this template to show you how I would do it. So I'm just going to kind of give you my overall tips too. I like to hide a lot of these columns just to save space on the page. What I like to have open is always going to be a uh, specific landing page that we're looking at, SEMrush, Ahrefs, uh, and sometimes even the SERPs as well. So the main keyword of this page is going to be Boston SEO. I like to also come over to the keywords data and also for the record, you could pipe this data into the recommendations if you want. I just have it over here to save some space. Uh, so these are going to be the secondary keywords. And if you recall what these keywords should be doing, if we're doing keyword research properly, the secondary keywords should be less about the exact words you need on the page and more about the context of the page and the message that we're trying to communicate but of course also the keywords that should be on the page. What I want to try and communicate to you guys is looking at these keywords from a contextual point of view. If this is the main keyword Boston SEO, and these are the supporting and secondary or semantic keywords, however you wanna call them, what is the best way we can display this information from an SEO point of view, from a visitor point of view, and from a conversion point of view on the page? That's what we wanna get out of this. So clearly this page should be about a company, an agency, we should be experts, consultants, and for sure the best in Boston, right? Also local, so like we, we're getting the local, obviously this is about a city, expert consultants, company, agency services. So when we go to the specific page, so the first thing I like to do is see if there's any keyword gaps for things that's obviously missing from the page. And to make this easier, you can just copy these over here into keyword gaps, because these are what we're gonna be specifically pretty much looking at. So I like to come here and get an overall context and understanding of the page from a flow and a keyword point of view. I like how they have breadcrumbs on the page here. Anytime you're working with multiple folder structures, so this is a subfolder of locations, uh, we're gonna wanna try and implement breadcrumb. So if it didn't have it on here, I could make a note in here, something like, so I could make a note here in the notes if it didn't have it, of course it does. Obviously the site already has it, but if you're gonna be particular, this is a little bit too close to the navigation here. So instead of this, you could say something along the lines of, so I just added a note here to add five more pixel space in between the breadcrumbs and the navigation, very simple thing. Uh, also this image either looks off or it's too small. So I would make a note in here that says, fix header image, get larger image to fill up the space. You can see here how uh, this just looks funny. So I just wanna keep going down the page a little bit to get a feel for it. So they've got a subheading here that has different aspects of the service, which is good. I really like that. Uh, another subheading here with reviews that's linking out to uh, both Google and Facebook verified reviews. Uh, a nice little sales section here, again, with subheadings in here uh, that allows us to give um, a little bit more of a sales pitch, but also adding more keywords to the page. Um, so keeping in mind uh, the marriage of keyword usage and SEO, uh, while also keeping in mind UX and conversion principles as well. Uh, a nice little map embed too here. This is great for local SEO. Uh, call the action down here to schedule a consult and then some FAQs down here, which I really love. As I said, I've been putting this on almost all of my landing pages now uh, to just add more keywords to a page without looking spammy or just having a bunch of random text and shit at the bottom of a page. Okay, so <clears throat> after I go through and get a topical overview of the page, what I can do 
and we can just copy this over here too into the keyword gaps is to go through and actually see if these keywords are being used on the page so we can just do a simple control f and paste um, and notice here that this keyword is not on the page directly again it's not uh, the end of the world but if we spend the time doing the keyword research to identify that these are the exact keywords that we want they should definitely be added to the page so when i don't find a keyword on there i'll just leave it in the keyword gaps and again, even though this keyword might be represented uh, in a different fashion, we do want to have this, this format of the keyword. So for example, this keyword is not on the page, right? But it's an easy way to inject that into a page by just looking for the keyword SEO agency. So here's SEO agency, it's only once on the page. Uh, you can see here that we went with Boston-based SEO agency right here, which is similar to this SEO agency in Boston. You could just switch this from Boston-based SEO agency to SEO agency in Boston again, just to get those keywords on the page. Uh, but again, at the end of the day, I'm not overly sold on the fact that you have to have exact keywords. I know that Google reads this keyword the same as it reads this keyword. Uh, and from the point of view of using it within a header or using it on the page, this reads for humans, whereas if I were to make this transparent SEO agency in Boston, um, it doesn't have the same ring in the same uh, proper copywriting as transparent Boston based SEO agency services, right? And also for the record too, I just want to state this here. There's definitely a bunch of tools that you can use for on page analysis. I'm going through and showing you the manual way because I want you to understand the nuts and bolts of how a page should function from an SEO point of view. And you can absolutely skip over this or layer on page tools on top of this uh, there's a de bunch of different ways you can approach this but again I just want to give you kind of my thought process for analyzing a page and getting the most out of these pages so you understand the strategy of it and then you can take this and make it your own and implement it how you want so after I'll go through and just check for the keywords I'll remove the keywords that are uh, that are on the page that are not in there and just leave the keyword gaps here again um, sometimes it's best to just write it in here too that for example uh, missing so what I just wrote was missing key secondary keywords on the page you can easily replace existing words on the page with these so just kind of making a note to inject these into copy where possible after I go through that and do the initial topical review uh, what I'll do is take the keyword the main keyword and put it into SEM rush so you can see here under the content uh, SEO content template um, I just dumped in Boston SEO right here uh, and this is what comes back. So what I really like about this report is a couple of things. Number one is the semantically related keywords. So again, going back to see if these words are on the page. Now, these are not keywords. What these are are ways that you can help to build the context of the page to be about what we want it to be about. So what this report is saying is that based on your keyword, Boston SEO, we found a ton of the top 10 results having these words on the page. So if we go through them, digital marketing, search results, organic search, high quality, design, local businesses, uh, link building, SEO experts, social media, optimize your website. So these are not all, again, just like Boston-based SEO keywords, uh, Boston SEO services. They're not keywords. These are telling you the context of what else should be on the page to make this page relevant enough to rank for Boston SEO. So things like high quality, things like organic search, things like social media, things like link building. This is telling us that these words are all related to making this page as highly relevant and contextually as possible. The other thing that I like to look at is text length. So this tells me that the top 10 results, the average text length per page is 811 words. So I already went ahead and typed that in here. Uh, we have 1424, just as a general rule of thumb, it's not always exact, but it's always better to have more words on the page than not. We were able to get a ton of words on the page because of how we formatted the UX uh, using different design styles to truncate content and give us more of a long, t a long form feel without making it truly long form. Uh, so then of course too we discuss page titles this is when we go through and write the page title um, i gave you the exact guidance on how i go through that so you can just rewrite the title here um, again these are already great page titles these are already optimized um, you can see kind of our strategy there uh, which i reviewed again in the title video same thing here with meta descriptions i'm not going to go through this because i went through it in detail uh, you just rewrite the metas now getting into the subheadings and h1 so just a little seo tip that i like to share with you guys is uh, just using the inspect tool um, so you could use view page source but the inspect tool is a little bit more of a kind of a technical seo way to do things you can get a lot more insights using inspect so uh, when i'm looking at headers what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go through the page and i'm going to find the headers on the page assuming that they exist i'm going to highlight it I'm going to right click and go to inspect. And when I highlight the code over here, you can see that this is wrapped in an H2. Uh, so we know that this is an H2. Preferably, I would like to make this an H1. So the note that I would want to make in here 
would be something like this. So what I wrote was change Boston's number one SEO company and header to be an H1, it's currently an H2. Uh, just general best practices is the first heading on a page, uh, that's not the page title, should always be an H1. And this is just a really good way to, again, help Google understand what the page is about. So we wanna try and use the main keywords in here. So what I went with here is Boston's number one SEO company. And the reason why I like that is because it's a little bit salesy. It tells the, the visitor that, hey, we're number one. Hopefully we can support that with on the page, which I'll show you how we did. But then obviously Boston SEO company and the H1 really tells search engines that this page is committed to being about a Boston SEO company uh, between the title, the context of the page, and the H1 telling us what that page is about exactly. So again, I would make a note there to make this an H1 because it's currently an H2. Going to the next one here, again, highlight inspect. So you can see this is an H2. And again, uh, they, we've done a nice job of adding in Boston-based SEO agency services, transparent, uh, using this as the header. So this is good again, because this is going after those main and secondary keywords. When it comes to optimizing our subheadings, we wanna try and do two things. Number one is we wanna obviously get our main keywords in there, but we also wanna try and tell the story of the page for skimmers, because a lot of people aren't gonna sit here and read all this text. They're just gonna hit these subheadings, and we wanna try and give them an overall context of the page and lead them down to conversion. So can we do two things? Number one is get our main and secondary keywords in these titles in a way that reads properly, right? So not keyword stuffed, just like SEO agency Boston, Boston SEO agency all over the page. Can we make it look and read for visitors and users, not for bots, while including our keywords? And can we tell the right story to somebody who's gonna skim the page? Can we ultimately get them to the conversion point just using our headers? So those are the challenges with subheadings. Those are the goals. We wanna make sure that we're trying to do that and we want to understand how they currently have these laid out. So this is a good H2 right here. This is kind of a lead in to telling us about uh, the agency services. And then I really like this section on the page here. So when I told you that we were able to get a lot more text on the page using creative design, you can see here we went to a nice little tab navigation that is instead of listing this out in just long form content, uh, it's just a way to add a lot more keywords on the page. So things like technical, uh, keyword research, content, link, reporting, these are all things that I know people are semantically looking for because these are what an SEO is made up for, right? So if somebody's looking for technical SEO agency in Miami, we've got a chance to rank for it because we've got technical SEO on the page. Same thing with keyword research, content marketing, link building in Miami. We've got a good chance of ranking this page because we've got subsections dedicated to that. But it's also very creatively designed to just take up a little bit of space on the page and not jam something that, that people are just gonna breeze right by. So again, just hitting the eye pattern, we can see all these things included. The person does not have to read all these to understand. And then what we wanna check here too is this other heading here. This should be an H3. And this is, you can see how this is nicely, uh, not only written with keywords, but just kind of formatted for the page. You can see here the Boston-based SEO experts is, is well put into here. Uh, it looks like this is an external link here to backlink. Oh, I like this. So this is, I, I like using external links on pages to cite high authority, high trusted, high respected websites, because what it can do is associate your page with that one, right? So by me linking out to Brian Dean's guide, which ranks first for Google ranking factors, this is telling search engines that this page is citing that page as a source. So that page that we're citing as a source has thousands of links from other amazing domains. So again, we're building all of that relevancy and we're saying that uh, this page is citing that page as a source, right? So we can be looked at with at least the same light. So we wanna use external links sparingly on pages like this because this is a landing conversion page. Um, so I just kind of jammed it down here into a place where I know people won't click. Uh, and even if they do, just make sure that it opens externally. That's another little UX factor you can check that all external links should be opening externally not internally, right? So that way they just click on it, it takes them away to another site, but they still have this browser open where they can come back and look at it. And then I also added down here this read more section to, in, these are internal links, right? So this is another way of using internal links um, to associate pages on our site with this page. So these are two links, this one's to our guide about technical SEO, this one is a link to a slide deck about an SEO audit. And the reason why I do this is again, I like to use links almost as citation purposes. So uh, if you're reading this, this page here and you come to our website for the first time uh, and you don't know anything about technical SEO, I can link to this and I can show you how much knowledge that we have on here, right? So if this page doesn't help you convert and you're looking for more information, here's where you can find that. Uh, and again, what this is doing is this is linking up and this is creating silos of relevancy, right? This is pushing all of this link equity to all these relevant pages and posts on the website. That's creating topical relevancy and authority with our website. 
So going on with the heading analysis here, we're going to inspect this one too. This is also an H2 as well, Boston's top reviewed SEO agency. So again, we got Boston reviewed SEO agency in here. Uh, and what I did here too was link to our uh, Facebook reviews uh, so people can read these as well. This is a, a very big conversion point for us um, to show all the recommendations and the high ratings that we have both on Google uh, and on Facebook. And again, just linking to these externally with um, they add and leverage, they add and lend authority to this page, right? Linking to Google, linking to Facebook. These are authority properties. These are reviews. Google knows and understands that, that we're doing that to help support this page. Uh, and then, as I said here too, this is going to be another H2 inspect this. Um, this is a great way that we found, uh, I use this on all of my landing pages this nice little kind of like image and then sales copy layout, uh, a great way to add additional keywords to a page. Um, but also sell people on why to use us specifically, right? So it talks about our services, it talks about our reviews, and then specifically, give me a sales pitch, why should we use your services? Uh, and I went ahead here and of course, Boston SEO services uh, to just continue to drive that relevancy home. But then I go through here and again, it's not only adding uh, a good amount of sales copy to the page, uh, but adding additional keywords. So locally focused, remember I had local on there too, that was one of the semantics I want to get in there, that's how we worked it in there. Uh, and then of course, just citing some results as a, as a little sales page here. Uh, this is something that I also really like to do with local landing pages. So because this is a local business, we have a verified Google address. I wanted to embed that map on the page. And again, get that relevancy and that context to show Google that this page is about a specific location, which definitely helps us to rank locally in those maps pack when you're looking for uh, Boston SEO agency. So getting this again, and a way to uh, cite an external source uh, through external linking and embeds is a great way to add more media to a page. It's a great way to add more context to a page, but it's also a great way to send the right signals to search engines uh, that this is a page about a local business with a physical location. And this is going to help to link those two pages together. Course call to action here to convert. And then FAQs, as I said before, this is something that I've been adding to uh, pretty much all of my landing pages, just nice little accordions at the bottom. Uh, because these are those other uh, frequently asked questions that people always have. Uh, and you can get these from Google, you can get these from uh, SEM Rush, you can get them from a number of places, right? Uh, you can get from Answer the Public. Uh, just again, more information, more context on the page that I know people are searching for uh, when it comes to finding an SEO agency. People always ask me about pricing, people always ask me about where, how and where they can work with um, us if we're not based in Boston. They ask about links, they ask about content. There's a ton of things that you can add here. Again, so I see a lot of people on their landing pages will so just like try and jam in a bunch of like keyword rich content at the bottom of a page. It just doesn't look good um, and it's spammy. This is a really nice way to both present content information the right way, add more keywords to a page, and also help to push with conversions too because this is saving me time on consults. It helps to pre-qualify leads a little bit more by explaining to them how we run our service. So I got a little bit off topic there. Um, what I would want to do here is uh, fill in the recommended H1. So I actually like the fact here that we they've used Boston's number one SEO company. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in here. But then just make sure that you note here to change this uh, to be the H1. Uh, and then recommended subheadings too. What you can do is if you wanted to rewrite these, which personally I don't, what you do is you would just take these, copy these in as the H2s. Um, so like, for example, if you didn't want to use Boston SEO services, um, if you wanted to use, if you wanted to do something like replace Boston with New England or something like that, I don't know, you could change that in here. Uh, you're just going to dictate all the headings on the page right there in the subheadings that they should be. Again, external links too. as you're going through this, um, something that I'll like to do the, the how I came up with these internal links. Uh, it's a very simple tactic that I'll use. So for example, uh, I have a subsection here about tech class SEO. I have a subsection here about keyword research content. So what I want to do is try and link to a page that's relevant to, to tech class SEO, keyword research content all on the site, right? So what I would do is I just come up here and do a site search. This is when I don't know the site very well. And I would just do something like technical SEO. When you put this in bunny quotes up here, it's telling Google to search webers.org and find me a page on the site that has these exact keywords on the page. So ideally, we'd want to find a post or a page that's directly about technical SEO. You can see here that we've got a number of them, uh, or at least something that mentions technical SEO within it, right? Uh, and you would just add those links in here. So for example, if we wanted to add this internal link to the page, I would just grab the URL and I would paste it. And then I would also make a note in here, uh, say link from anchor text. 
So what I wrote here is just the link to add in. Then I also added a note to link from Anchor Text Technical SEO and the Technical SEO subsection on the page. Uh, and then you could just go down and just add as many internal links as you wanted. Uh, the number of images on the page, you can just count these manually. I would go one, two, three, these are technical images, four, five, six, seven, technically an image, eight, technically an image. Um, so I would mark this down as eight on the page. Um, I would say that's enough. I mean, what you can do to see if that's enough, uh, or again, too, if you, I, I, I went through this because I know that page very well and I know the industry very well. Another tactic that you probably should be employing too is competitive research. So opening up uh, the top results that are similar to what your page is about to see how they have it formatted. So this is the page here that's ranking first. Uh, we can just get kind of a picture and a context for what this page is about. You can see here that uh, they're, they're getting aggressive here with the Boston SEO keyword usage up here in the top, um, similar to how we have it, Boston SEO services. Again, they've got uh, the variation here, Boston SEO company, Boston SEO services, uh, Boston SEO company. Again, this is getting a little bit spammy for me, but you can just tell that it's, it's still working because they're, they're ranking first, um, which is important. You can see they've got uh, some really crappy images here of um, some clients that they've worked with. Um, this is looking uh, some testimonials. Uh, you can see they've got a video on the page that might help too. This is a video about Boston SEO, so you might want to make a recommendation here to add a video to the page. Um, you can see here too, they've, they've just jammed keyword usage in here. Uh, it doesn't really read really well, um, but you know, again, this is why it's important. Uh, you know, a lot of people will teach you SEO just to rank. I want to teach you SEO to make money and convert. Um, you know, if I personally come to this page, it's not gonna overly jump out at me to want to work with a company because the design is off, the copy is pretty poor, um, but they're ranking first, right? So I can't, I can't knock that at all. Uh, you can also see here too that they're they're clearly having some issues with their CMS. This is um, again too top of the too type to the too too close to the top. Uh, the font is off. I know it defaults to this um, serif font when there's an issue with uh, the page rendering. So it's important to go through competitors to also help you to fill this stuff out as well, um, to see how many images, maybe if you wanna add some media. So I could make a note in here too, that's, so you can see, I just added a note in here that says top re uh, result has a video about SEO. And importantly too, to note that with the notes, we wanna try and make this as much of as a directive outline as possible so somebody can take this and implement it. So what I'm gonna talk about in the last video here um, is who implements this stuff. So if I'm going through and I'm gonna make the implementations myself, if I'm gonna change the titles, if I'm gonna change the copy on the page, if I'm gonna add images, uh, then it doesn't have to be too descriptive. I can actually just have the page open while I'm doing this and just document it so the client can see it. But if the client's going to do this or if you're going to pass this to uh, one of your like offshore VAs to implement, you need to make sure that these notes as a detailed directive. And I'm going to show you in the next video where uh, I actually get into building the report, how you should be taking this and making action items in your project management solution. So that way this stuff does get implemented uh, and you're on top of the right parties to make sure it gets done that way. So that's how I do uh, on page analysis for uh, using this file. Uh, I'm also going to do another video showing you how I do it for an e-commerce site that I have. And as always, if you guys have any questions, please hit me up in Slack. And so I'll that's exactly how we do on-page optimization at the agency within the Blueprint Training. If you guys want these templates, go ahead and over to the Blueprint Training. They're all waiting for you, including this amazing Google Sheets add-on. And as always, if you guys like the video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.